Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Today we're going to be working on a new problem as part of Go Math's 2015 teacher workshop series. We're working on number 37 on the CSET Multiple Subjects Math and Science Teacher Certification Exam. Their uh, problem from their practice test in California. It's a nice problem because it's, it's going to go through a very common type of algebra problem where we have to match up a table with its graphic representation. And this problem here, it sort of also integrates, you know, a little bit of data analysis and geometry. So a nice intermediate problem. Let's look at numbers 37. It says, use the table below to answer the question that follows. And they give you a table. Now on tables we have inputs and outputs. And we have, uh, you'll notice here, it says radius and area. So right away your mind should be thinking about radius, that's the... That's the distance between the origin of a circle and its outer edge. And area of a circle, well, area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. All right, it says the table gives the area of several circles of different radii. Which of the following graphs best represents the data in the table? Okay, and we have these graphic representations of this table or graphic representations of this equation, um, pi r squared. One way to solve this is just to do an input-output way. You know that as the inputs increase, the areas, the outputs increase um, pretty rapidly. And we can tell by just looking at the changes in, in these outputs. So the inputs are a constant, They're going up by 1 in between each one of these uh, inputs, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. But the change in the outputs, this one is going up by plus 3, this is going up by 9. This one's going up by what? That's like, I don't know, 26. This, this is going up much graphically. If you, if you see that, you'll see that as the radiuses get larger, the circles get larger and their areas are, are much larger. So a circle with a small area, I mean a small radius is going to have a small area, and a circle with a much larger radius is going to have a much, much larger area. So if we know that and we look at the graphic representations, you know, we could probably eliminate D because it looks like as the radius increases, the areas go up and then they decrease. And we're looking for something where as the radius increases, the areas increase. Cross that one off. We're just taking this input-output approach. We could, we could look at B. As the, air is, as the radius increases, we're looking for an area that increases and, and increases at a faster pace as you go on. And in this case, it looks like it actually kind of slows down. So for that reason, we cross out B. Now, well, what about A? Well, A, as the radius increases, the area increases at the same rate. Same rate of change. Sometimes we think of this rate as a slope. And A shows a constant slope. It forms a straight line. Whenever you have a straight line, you're dealing with a constant slope or, or a linear equation. And and this one right here doesn't have a constant slope because although the radius is increasing at a constant rate, the area is increasing at a much faster rate. So we could cross out that. And we kind of get to C, which kind of just input-output makes sense. As the radius increases, the area shoots up. That's one way to solve the problem. You know, another way is to be able to do a quick sketch of the information in this table. I have this, this table of inputs and outputs. I can think about in and out. This is my x-axis. This is my y-axis. This is my radius. This is the area. And be like, just plot some of these points real quick. Well, you don't have to do too many of these. Just to, just to get a rough idea, maybe just plot three points. For example, at 0, 0, it's here. And at 1, 1, 3, it'd be... 1, 3 would be here. That's actually 1 and 3.14. This is uh, 0, 0. And this, this other one here, 2, 12, that would be sh way up here. So we get an idea that, uh, quick sketch, this one kind of looks something like this. 
Well, which one of these graphs looks like my quick sketch? Not D, not B, not A, C. All right. There's other things here. We could take it, we could try and solve this uh, looking at the equation. We have the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Now what type of equation is that? Is it a linear equation? What kind of equation is that? Well, let's look at A. A is a, forms a straight line. It forms a linear equation. And we think of A as y is equal to mx plus b, kind of with this structure. The, the m is our slope. The b is our y-intercept. It's got a constant rate. Uh, we, uh, these other ones here, like uh, this one here, d, it's actually a quadratic function. Quadratic here, it has this structure of y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now if the a, it forms a parabola, if the a is negative, if this was a negative ax squared plus bx plus c, it would be a downward facing parabola like the one we have. Yeah, we're not really dealing with, there's no, this really doesn't match up with that. This one right here, it's a power function. And, and it, a power functions have the structure of y is equal to a times x to some exponent power. And as you can see, the a, we think of the a in a power function as our as a constant, it's our it's our initial value, our starting point, and that's what pi is. And the x is our variable. That's what the radius is. That changes. And the two, the b refers to the exponent. In the power functions, you know, we're looking at you know an exp in the in the area formula of a circle. It's all it's a two. So this one here actually matches up with this graph here. So this one, the area of a circle, matches up with the structure of a power function. And that gets you to, you know, the, the structure of this, of this question here. This is very much a power function. y is equal to, you know, axb, or y is equal to pi r squared. This last one here is a nice, uh, nice tricky one. We'll leave that for later. Um, it's important to be able to make the connection that um, this right here, the area formula of a circle matches up with a power function and to be able to, to know what power functions look like, linear equations look like, quadratic equations look like, those, what those functions look like so that you can match them, you can match them up quicker with the correct you know, data points and the correct, the correct equation. Okay, I gave three ways to solve this problem. Make sure you at least know two ways to solve it. And definitely when we go into the harder math problems, we'll look at lin the structure of linear equations and quadratic equations and power functions. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Stay tuned for more. Have a great day. Take care.